this is what you missed on ReCheck. Next up, we have Pull Veterinary Services' second most senior vet, a woman who needs no introduction, the amazing Dr. Brenda. Welcome to ReCheck, Dr. Brenda. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for asking me, Charles. On last week's episode, the clinic was short-staffed, and it was just like old times. Just Dr. Pohl and Dr. Brenda holding down the floor where all the other vets were away. Um, Dr. Brenda, when you're in those situations where it's just do you and Dr. Pohl, that's that's something that's very familiar. You guys are used to working your you guys are used to working with each other like that. That's right. We've worked together for quite a number of years, um, sometimes with help, sometimes just the two of us. Basically, you know, don't forget, Brenda was born and raised on the dairy farm. So she knows what's going on on the dairy farm and she can handle it. She can do all the things herself, really. Dr. Brenda, speaking of uh, growing up in a dairy farm, can you tell us a little bit about the farm where you grew up and what it was like to grow up on a dairy farm? So you have to remember that I grew up on a dairy farm, so I don't know growing up anyplace else different. Um, we had a small family dairy. Uh, my folks milked. Holstein and Holstein cross cattle for about 40 years. Uh, they have sold the cows in the last couple of years. The cows have been gone, but um, we've we've milked cows and had cattle of some sort there pretty much the whole time my parents have owned the farm. So, um, you know, there was always chores to do. There's always milking to do. There's always just things to do. And, and all around, everything revolved around the cattle. So cattle came first, then the rest of us. So, Dr. Brenda, obviously, um, I can see that you have some steers behind you. Um, you have a couple of steers, and in the past, you've trained them actually as oxen to to pull things. Um, was that kind of influence that, uh, did 4-H have an influence on you wanting to do uh, the training with the oxen and the steers? I think that... Um... 4-H, uh, just the working with cattle and being involved with cattle and having the 4-H uh, commitments and some of the things that I learned through um, 4-H certainly made me want to have cattle, um, but with my job as a veterinarian, milking cows on top of that was not going to be a feasible option. Uh, the three boys that I have now are all from mom and dad's dairy herd, so these are all um, sons of cows that we've had forever. Uh, so that's kind of cool that they've, we've been able to keep them around. Um, and then you know, you have to justify why you've got cattle. Um, and so there, my justification for keeping the steers is they had to have a job and being an oxen was going to be their job. Uh, unfortunately, they're not super good at their job. And that's probably my fail because I don't have enough time to spend with their training and, and keeping up with them. Uh, but it does keep me busy. And there's some happiness to, for me just having them out in the backyard, you know, to have them um, just hanging out in the backyard, uh, be able to to, to use them a little bit, to drive them a little bit. Um, I still go to an open class uh, ox show uh, down in my hometown or my hometown area uh, when they have the fairs. Unfortunately, this year it got canceled due to the COVID reasons. Dad, you grew up on a dairy farm yourself and so did Dr. Brenda. Do you think uh, growing up around animals at a young age helps somebody become a veterinarian later on in life? It no, makes it no, easier? That, it really doesn't help them to become a veterinarian. I think it helps to become a better veterinarian because when you grow up with animals, you learn about animals. And I think that's very important. 4-H has a lot to do with that, of course, but also being raised on the dairy farm, where you learn to understand animals, see what animals want, what animals need, and what animals can do to you. Dr. Brennan, it's my understanding you have quite the cow figurine collection. When did you start collecting cow figurines? Was it right about the time you got steers, or have you been collecting it for a long time? So I collected them pretty much my whole life. Um, not as much when I was younger, a little bit more now. Probably sort of those uh, years before I actually had the, the live cattle, I had a little bit more um, cow figurines. They're a little bit easier to care for. You know, you dust them once in a while, and that's about all you need to do for them. And they don't, you don't have to clean up any manure from them, so that's a bonus <laughs> too. Um, but there is some, there are some good benefits to having the the warm, live, fuzzy bodies here um, to, to take care of. They, you know, they're they can be frustrating, but they they provide a lot of comfort also. Yes. Yeah, animals do really help you out no matter what type of animal that you have. Um, 
Do you, could you introduce us to your three cows and, and tell us their names and, and talk a little bit about them and their personalities? Because cows have personalities too, right? Like they, they're very unique. Right. So the steers here, the, um, I know it turns, I'm looking at them with you. So to my left um, is Reed, and he is um, the youngest one. The black one here in the front face, not with the white face, is Kirby. He thinks he's king of the world. Um, and then behind him, which you can't see right now because he's covering him up, is my old steer, Zeter. And Zeter will be 11 this year. So he also thinks he's king of the world. That gives us some problems uh, some days. Well, that's that's fantastic, Brenda. Thank you so much for uh, introducing you, us to your steers. Um, what do you love most about working with them and 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 having cows? So having the steers is just like I said, it's it's a comfort to me because it's as close as I can get to having cattle all the time. Um, I don't have the facilities here where I live to keep them year round, so they come for the summer and stay with us, just stay with me for the summer. So I work them here, um, just having them, just just watching them uh, do their thing and, and watching them work like I'm asking them to work, be able to do the obstacle course routines we're trying to get them to do. You know, when we have wind days and we're on and we're doing really well, that's pretty exciting for me. Well, Dr. Brenda, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you are probably the fan favorite. We've had more requests to have you on the show than anybody else. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you for showing us uh, your cattle. And I had a note from you as well that uh, while you love your cow figurines that uh, you do have enough. So um, you're not looking for people to send you a whole bunch more cow figurines, right? Right. I, I live in a little tiny house. There won't be room for me in there if we get too many more cow figurines in there. We really appreciate having you on, Brenda. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. Yep, see you Monday. Subscribe here to Dr. Pole Presents to watch even more content coming your way soon.